Good morning. Good morning. You may introduce yourself. My name is Jim Don Moyer. I'm the Executive Direct Director of Lebanon County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse. And who are you with today? <laughs> I'm yeah. with Sue Douglas. Sue Douglas. Sue Douglas is the fiscal officer for our office. And then we check the EI. Nice to have you back, Sue. All right, Jim, do you want to just proceed? Sure. I am here today to present two separate uh, situations. The first being contracts for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Uh, before I proceed into talking about the contracts, I do need a signature from the commissioners uh, and I'll explain what this signature entails. This letter, I'm sending a letter to DDAP, Department of Drug and Alcohol Programs. This letter is informed that the Lebanon County Commissioners have authorized myself to execute all contracts on behalf of Lebanon County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse. The reason this needs to be signed, uh, we're in a new grant agreement from 2020 to 2025. And apparently, this needs to be signed every new grant agreement. And when I get into the contracts, you understand why it's important for me to be able to execute them on your behalf and not continually come in here for amendments and so forth. We used so to have boxes this big full of contracts. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 so you're actually a little, uh, most have already been doing this. So DDEPs catch up, I guess. Yeah. I'm the messenger. That's okay. <laughs> But so, yes. Okay, we'll Wait, talk you about. You want to take a motion yeah, on that? Like just, yeah. just, yeah. just to make a motion to approve that authorization. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve uh, the uh, the authorization for signatures on those contracts as been uh, explained by the director. Uh, any discussion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. Okay, thank you. The Lebanon County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse uh, presenting the 2022-2023 contract summary sheet. I believe you have received a copy that looks similar to this. Yeah. I want to explain a few things on, the, on these uh, sheets. We have, our office has contracts with 37 providers total. Out of those 37 providers, there's 62 programs within those providers. Now, the providers uh, cover the full continuum of care that we would need for somebody that comes to our office seeking funding for treatment. Uh, it has IOP, it has outpatient, it has partial, it has halfway house, uh, rehabilitation, withdrawal management, uh, rehabilitation with dual diagnosis involved. So we have the continuum covered with the contracts that we currently hold. As you see on your sheet, hopefully, uh, the yellow, everything that's highlighted yellow on the sheets means that the rates are finalized and they're on the PACTA website. Just to let you know, every county SCA is responsible for obtaining <coughs> the contracts for your in-county providers. So that would be new perspectives, their inpatient, their detox, and their co-occurring programs. So I'm responsible for making sure three of those programs get listed on PACTA. Other counties are responsible for listing the programs that are in their county. So when you see blue, that tells you, it tells me that some counties have not entered all the rates on the PACTA website. So for instance, on the first page, Lancaster County Blueprints for Addiction Recovery, we are waiting on all those rates. And if you go through, most of the rates are here, most of it's yellow, but there are some blue throughout the handout. I just wanted to point that out to you that it's not a lack of us not having the rates. We can't get them until they finalize them and put them on packed That's the other reason that it's important that you sign that agreement. So when those rates do come into me, like I got a letter, it's somewhere here. I got a letter today one of the providers finally put the rates on the website. So then I'll go in here and I'll change those three rates so they're, they're active and up to date. So as we get those, this will change. And with that agreement, I don't have to come in here every time I get a letter and I start changing the rates on this sheet. The last thing I'd like to point out as far as the contracts, if you go all the way back to the second last page, 
I spoke about the uh, contracts and the rates that we have to set here for Lebanon County that we're responsible for. Just to give you some example, uh, rate setting occurs in April, May. Uh, rate setting involves not only myself, but it also involves Dolphin County SCA, Lancaster County, Perry, Cumberland, and Lebanon, of course. We're a five county collaborative. We get together and we set the rates for our five counties. Uh, basically what happened in rate setting this year, providers came in with uh, very, very high requests for rate increases. So just for example, new perspectives out here at our campus, uh, last year their adult detox was 249. This year the rate's gonna be 276, which is a 10.8% increase in the rate. That's per day. They, they asked for 37%. So we negotiated down to 10%. Their adult rehab was 210 last year. This year it'll be 233 for an 11% increase. They asked for 19%. And then you'll see adult co-occurring was 230. It's gonna be 255, which is a 10.9% increase. They asked for 21%. Uh, some of the providers asked for 40% uh, and above. So we, we try to do our best to, you know, we, we don't want to see providers go out of business. We don't. Uh, but there's a point where we have to stick to what we can afford budget-wise. Uh, just to give you some idea, the Lebanon County programs, the three that I just mentioned, they are on the low side of per diems per day for the similar programs in other counties. So we're on the low end yet. Believe it or not, that's the low end. Uh, and also, I want to bring up the fact that in Lebanon County, for outpatient rates, we increase their outpatient rates by 3% across the board. So every outpatient provider, includes the methadone clinic, will get a 3% increase on their rates. Again, Lebanon County rates are still the lowest for outpatient, outpatient group, outpatient individual, methadone so our rates are low and we're, we're steadily catching up to other counties uh, you know we want to we want to be fiscally sound but we also want to be appropriate what everybody else is setting their rates at especially in region f which is the five i mentioned so those are contracts for 2022 2023 seek a motion second <clears throat> motion on the floor to approve the uh, 2022 and 2022-23 contracts and um, any discussion? Jimmy? Um, I'm, I've noticed that many of the um, double digit increases to these are either in detox or rehab and I, I suspect that has to do with probably the same workforce struggles that, that um, um, healthcare facilities are facing detoxes you know, takes a certain medical component. I think across the state, they're struggling with retention of staff. You need uh, the biggest complaint I hear is nursing, the availability to keep people. I'm um, sure medication that they use when they detox someone has gone up as well. So there, there's a variety of reasons, but I believe it's the uh, uh, retention of employees and hiring people and keeping people. And one of the reasons that their their rates they wanted 40%, they gave us a budget that had six vacancies on it. So that's why we said, well, we'll give you 11%, you know, if you can prove to us that you can actually hire these people, you know, we can, we can look at it again next year, but, but that's why we, we didn't go with those higher rates pretty much across the, the whole region. Thank you for being shrewd and conservative with our dollars. Well, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, ways that they can make it appear that they need a 40% increase. Uh, they have to submit an XYZ packet, and we go over the XYZ packet, and if the math is correct, uh, it would come up to the percentages we came up with. Like Sue said, very easy to show, you know, our expenses are really high, but in reality they're not because there's six positions that are open at, you know, $150,000, $200,000 that aren't filled. So. It, it's kind of a back and forth. Uh, we do, we do as a region. Uh, I have some uh, very seasoned SEA directors with me in that group, and they've been through it 
25, 30 plus years. So they, they, they know the tricks. They know what to look for. And, oh, this doesn't look right. And, you know. Thank you, Grace. Like, like Wick, cat, Jack yeah. Carroll. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are, those are two that have been around for 30 plus years. Well, we appreciate your diligence and, uh, and your quality of your work as well. Anything else, Sue? Yeah. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. <coughs> so okay. The second thing I'd like to present uh, it's a one page handout, it is uh, the budget summary. Budget summary from 2021-2022, as well as the proposed 2022-23 budget. I would start at the top with expenditures. Uh, the first major expenditure that our office has is administration. As you can see, the difference from last year to the new year will be very similar. Uh, we also have the expense of our prevention department. Again, our prevention. Uh, budget from last year compared to the new year is relatively the same. It's about a $6,000 difference. The next item that we spend money on uh, an expenditure would be intervention services. Now, if you notice in 2021-2022, we budgeted $166,000 for intervention services. And this coming year, we're going to have to budget $215,000 which is about a 30% increase in that budget item. Uh, this increase is due to the increasing cost of crisis intervention. Uh, we were paying $103,000 last year for services, and this year we'll be paying $144,000. Treatment, the treatment, uh, total treatment expenditures are about the same. Case management, case management went up about 17%. Uh, that's the case management unit that we fund through PCS. Uh, and that basically went up because of salary increases and retention of staff efforts on their part. We also uh, have an expense of certified recovery specialists also with the PCS unit. That is actually going down 20%. So our total expenditures for the year will be $2.255010 million which is a slight increase. It's about 3.79% increase with a total value of increase of $82,000. The revenues, <clears throat> things I want to point out for the revenues, through DDAP, we are getting a total of $1.6 million, roughly, which is an increase. We are getting more COVID funds and source funds. We're getting one3 million for those two categories which is up from the previous year our block grant stays the same it's a flat funding uh, we're still getting the two thousand two hundred and ninety one thousand dollars for from the department of welfare for our block grant and then the county rental <coughs> fund uh, is the same as it was before so that comes out to 2.255 uh, revenues so mm -hmm. our budget Again, some things have gone up, some things have gone down. Uh, the things that have gone up, we're covering with more money from DDAP and other places that we're getting from the federal and state. Again, we're not here today to ask for any county funding whatsoever. Uh, and we do realize that the rental is, for all intents purposes, the county funding part. And that's actually gone down to 30,000. Well, and, the re and Sue told me to make sure you're aware of this. In previous years, we had to dip into the rental fund to cover the budget. This year, we don't expect to do that. That's why the total is 163 okay. instead of 192. And yeah, they came out with this COVID supplemental funding um, for the case management and the certified recovery specialist programs. Um, and we should have some carryover from that that's going to carry over into next year. Mm -hmm. But we can ask for more um, if we need it. Looks like a good budget. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the two million two hundred fifty-five thousand dollar and uh, five thousand and ten dollar sorry um, budget as presented. Second. Don't, want, don't want to forget that ten dollars. That's important. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the twenty-two twenty-three budget for the uh, drug and alcohol 
next year. Any uh, questions or comments? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. You know the other thing, you have a five year comparison. I don't know if you want to go back five years and look at it. So, uh, that's also, really helpful. It gives you some idea. I mean, I don't know. Proud of the fact, I guess. I am proud of the fact. Uh, when I started eight years ago, we had a $1.1 million budget. So we doubled our budget in eight years and no extra cost to the county. It's all federal, state. You know, if there's something out there that we can go and get, like a grant proposal or, you know, some kind of uh, initiative that they're putting out there for us, we'll go and do it. Bring it up. Yeah, the state opioid response, the SOR money, has been out there for several years. And they are really trying, they're trying to get it spent. So, so if we need more, they're always telling us, just, that, you know, tell us what you need and we'll, you know, we'll see if we can make it happen. And they've been very good about that. Past couple of years. I don't know. I think John has another rival here. Sue's really going after that money, too. <laughs> so my question is uh, not related necessarily to this, but the, uh, have things opened up at the prison for you to go back in? We're, we're back in. Right. And, and that brings me to a point, too. I just wanted to make you guys aware that we no longer fund the uh, Vivitrol program at the prison. Uh, we funded that for two years due to the fact that. The county prison applied for a grant. They didn't get it two years ago. So I said that I would fund it until, well, until it was here. Uh, they actually reapplied for a grant, got it. So they're funding their own Vivitrol program. We're still involved, but it's not coming from our office. Frees up money, like we talked about, to move money around in areas that we actually need it. All right, very good. I don't know, Sue, if you, you, she did a summary. You have a summary in front of you. It's kind of what I went over in the budget. Yeah, we but much whatever. We'll see. Okay. Anything else? All in. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. James, can you send me that sign sheet then? Yeah, Dawn has okay. it. Yep. Thank you. Oh, that's right. Dan Seaman is following up on the workshop yesterday. Thanks, Is this for the camera? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Good, good morning, morning, Dan. We attempted Welcome. to cover it yesterday. Some difficulty with technology and connectivity, but uh, Dan's here to follow up on that. Mm -hmm. Please introduce yourself and uh, you make this. Yep. 